tonight on Sideline. The regular season campaign trail is over and the playoff brackets are set. Teams not making it to the postseason got one more chance to shine in 2012. The battle of O'Shell Road between St. Paul's and UMS Wright turned out to be a dud as the Saints have put together a three game winning streak dominating UMS Wright tonight. Baker's making a trip to the postseason for the first time since 1990. Tonight, the Hornets try to get some momentum going against LaFleur. And Murphy misses the postseason for the first time since 2003. The Panthers try to close out the season on a high note against the Viger Wolves, who are prowling to the playoffs. Thanks for electing to tune in to another edition of Sideline. You've got the best seat in the house. All the scores from all the big games. It's all coming up right now on Sideline. Sponsored by Palmer's Toyota Superstore. Now, here's Randy Patrick. Well, welcome back. Time flies when you're playing football and reporting on football in the state of Alabama. The state that has produced three straight national championship football teams in college and who knows maybe a fourth as the tide is rolling into Baton Rouge this weekend to take on the LSU Tigers. Well we only end up with one undefeated team in southwest Alabama after 10 weeks of play. That would be the McGill Tulin Yellow Jackets. Jackson the only other undefeated team lost tonight. We'll talk more about that later in the show. Let's get right now to highlights starting with the Battle of Old Shell Road. UMS Wright coming to St. Paul's with an 8 and 1 record and a ranking in the state class 4A rankings and of course St. Paul's ranked in class 5A coming in at 7 and 2. Terry Curtis trying to devise a game plan to score some points against a tough St. Paul's team that has an awesome offense and Bradley Paget strikes early to Kylan Towner and the Saints offense is in gear and the crowd with plenty of horns and plenty of things to cheer about tonight. That's Jordan Huff around the right end for the touchdown and we clean off the lens here to see another Jordan Huff touchdown. And UMS Wright avoided a shutout, getting a second half touchdown as St. Paul's wins it 38 to 8. Your final score. The Dogs will host St. James next week in round one of the playoffs, and the Saints will play at Eufaula. Baker's headed to the playoffs for the first time in 23 years. They're at home tonight. The Hornets hosting the LaFleur Rattlers, and Baker has an awesome running back, and Baron Tyson, and here he comes. And there he goes, number 20 around the left end, in for the touchdown. And it's 14 to nothing in favor of the home team, Baker Hornets. And again, it's Tyson, this time lowering his head, taking a hit, but he gets six in return. 21 to nothing in favor of Coach Jack French's team. And LaFleur trying to get something going. Dominic Johnson with the touchdown pass to Corey Lee. And that's good for six. The Rattlers are going to the playoffs. They'll be taking on Benjamin Russell next week on the road while the Hornets will be at Foley. Baker wins tonight 35 to 12. Your final score. Baker seven and three to complete the regular season. The floor falls to three and seven. Bryant and Daphne tonight. Good news. Got a text earlier today from Coach Glenn Vickery he says he's improving and things are looking good as far as uh, his illness, Daphne's Terrence Fleeton there with a short touchdown run. Then Alma Bryant's Justin Bowie throws, and it's intercepted by Tanner Lee for the Trojans. And that would put Fleeton and company back out on the field. And Fleeton to Waylon Tolbert in stride across the middle. And there he goes. But he's going to be run down by Ronald LaForce. Never quit. There you see, he stopped the uh, touchdown. But they can't stop the drive. Fleeton hands it off to Joshua Johnson for the touchdown run, and Bryant falls tonight to Daphne, 45-14. The Trojans will be hosting the Blunt Leopards in round one of the playoffs. Bryant finishes the year at 3-7. and seven. Fairhope at home tonight hosting Andalusia. Fairhope put 58 points on the board last week. The Pirates will be at Davidson next week. By the way, Davidson was idle tonight getting ready for the postseason with an extra week to prepare. Andalusia's Traverian Wallace there with the power touchdown run. And Andalusia is on the board in Buccaneer country, and the Pirates going to come right back, though. Our player of the week from last week, Nate Andrews, he knows how to find the end zone. He scored seven touchdowns last week, and Fairhope rolls to a 49-14 win tonight. They take an 8-2 record into the postseason. Escambia High School from Atmore coming down to take on Baldwin County and Baldwin County looking for that elusive first win of the season and the uh, 
Blue Devils there with the miscue, and that's going to put the Tigers offense there in business. And second and third effort ends up into the end zone for Baldwin County, who breaks the ice in the final week of the regular season. That's right, Baldwin County gets the win tonight. They do it in style, getting the shutout 20 to nothing. Baldwin County finishes the year 1-0. And nine. Way to go, Baldwin County. They didn't give up. Theodore visiting Foley tonight. Theodore's had a tough time this season, coming in at one and eight. Foley at six and three. They'll be hosting Baker, as I mentioned earlier in round one of the playoffs. The ball is in the air, and it's Taylor throwing down to Demarcus Bingham for the touchdown here. And one minute before halftime, Taylor will scramble again. And it's 54 yards for the touchdown for another Foley touchdown coming up. And the Foley Lions win it by a final score of 43 to 21. Foley 7 and 3 heading into the postseason. Viger visiting Murphy tonight at Lad People's Stadium. Murphy not going to the postseason for the first time since 03. Viger, of course, making it in Class 5A. They'll host Valley next week. And Devin Adams got picked off there by Zedrick Raymond, and he returns it into the red zone. And DePriest Turner will get the call here for Murphy now. And Murphy into the end zone for the score, seven to nothing Panthers. This is a Panthers team that, well, it's hard to believe that they entered this game at five and four on the season. They've got so much talent. There's a loose football. Samuel Green will pick it up and run it in. For the Viger Wolves, 7-7 seven, seven your score. Then Devin Adams throws the slot pass to Stephen Watts. And he's got it for the score. But Murphy comes back with a big second half and beats Viger tonight, 49-22. Murphy ends the regular season and the season at 6-4. Viger heads to the postseason at 7-3. Robertsdale tonight visiting Faith Academy. And the Faith Academy cheerleaders doing their job to try to keep the Guys upbeat, second half kickoff. The Rams' Lucas Davis takes the line drive, and wait, he's got running room, and the kicker can't get him, and he is gone, and this will tie the game at 24-24. Nice run there by Faith Academy, and the guys love it. Robertsdale, there comes right back. Alfonso Stewart going to call his own number, and he is in for six, 31-24, Golden Bears. And this one went right down to the wire. Faith Academy comes back and wins it 48 to 44. Faith Academy beating Robertsdale, who ends up at one and nine. Faith Academy is now three and seven. It's time for Sidelines Lucky Dog of the Week, sponsored by Aaron's. And back to Ivan Jones Stadium in Foley for our mascot of the week, the Foley Lion. And our lion with some pretty big teeth and a lot of bite in the Foley Lions this year as they take a 7-3 record into the playoffs. All right, congratulations, our Murphy cheerleaders, our cheerleaders of the week. And Murphy ending the season on an up note as they beat the Viger Wolves tonight. BC Reigns, Red Raiders taking a road trip to Sims tonight to take on the Mary Montgomery Vikings and fireworks start early. Second play from scrimmage here is Rashad Brown will pass one into the flat to John McCutcheon and he puts the ball on the ground. Zachary Booth will pick it up and scamper all the way for six for the Vikings who take a seven to nothing lead. And then MGM's offense shows they can do something with it, too. Burton Chapel will hand it off to Jalen Tuggle. Uh, yeah, and he is going to cough it up. Uh, lose football, I think. Yeah, Rain recovers. That drive would stall, though. But on Rain's next possession, Brown would find Darius Howard. And Howard takes it in. The point after attempt, no good. And MGM comes away with a 17-12 victory tonight. They finish the year. Four and six, BC Rain ends at three and seven. Gulf Shores and Citronelle tonight. Yes, we were in Citronelle tonight to check out the action. Second quarter, Marcus Eccles in the middle, 30 yard drive to uh, set up a touchdown. And uh, uh, two, uh, the extra point was good, and it was seven to nothing in favor of Citronelle. Third quarter, Joshua Frizzle takes a good hit on the punt return. And Gulf Shores and Citronelle playing a good close football game tonight. Neither team going to the playoffs. And Gulf Shores 
comes away with a three point victory 16 to 13 your final score. The Dolphins finished four and six Citronelle also finishing 2012 at four and six St. Luke's and Cottage Hill tonight. What a season for St. Luke's and what a season for their outstanding running back George Payne who had four touchdowns tonight. Here's one of them. He had 267 yards. He has 32 touchdowns on the season and went over the 2000 yard rushing mark leading St. Luke's to a 56 21 win tonight and St. Luke's will be making a 1 a playoff appearance hosting Pleasant Home next week. It's their first playoff appearance since joining the Alabama High School Athletic Association Thursday night action last night at the lip Sumter Central taking on the McGill Tulin Yellow Jackets and McGill entered this contest at 9 and 0 and it was no contest as McGill Tulin rolled to a 51 to nothing victory to finish the regular season 10 and 0. It's their first regular season 10 and 0 finish since 2007 when they went 13 and 1 that year and McGill Tulin is home next week hosting Enterprise in round one of the playoffs. Blunt and Williamson Blunt headed to the postseason but Williamson is not Williamson trying to end the uh, season on a positive note and things were looking good early for the Lions but Blunt came to play and came to win and they get the uh, victory 36 to 19 the Blunt Leopards winning last night and they will be heading to Daphne next week in round one of the playoffs the Toros only uh, loss this year is to St. Paul's and they'll be hosting Carroll High School next week coming in at nine and one on the season and Spanish Fort last night taking on Mobile Christian a team that is also heading to the playoffs Spanish Fort 52 to six winners over Mobile Christian last night to finish our Thursday night trifecta. Rush into your Southern Ford dealer for the Great American Tailgate event. Your Southern Ford dealers are proud to recognize this week's Coach of the Week. And we should recognize Coach Jack French for the job he has done at Baker High School. Seven and three, the Hornets head to the playoffs and take on Foley next week. Jack French, a former Baldwin County High School head coach and also a former coach in the state of Mississippi where he won four state championships. He was named the Coach of the Year in the state of Mississippi. In 1999, but Baker High is glad to have Jack French. Keith Palmer here from Palmer Toyota Superstore. You got to see this play. Hey, yeah, you got to see this play back to Viger Murphy. Cameron Mays pass. Watch one, two, three, four tips and finally caught. Are you kidding me? The old tip drill. You got to concentrate. Let's look at it one more time and slow it down as the ball gets in the air. There's a tip. There's another tip and another tip. And finally, the fourth is the charm for the Murphy Panthers who won the game tonight beating the Biker Wolves 49 to 22. Let's check our scoreboard tonight. Hey, hey Jackson and Thomasville tonight. What a rivalry this game is and they throw out the records and well that's what they did. Jackson came in at 9 and 0 Thomasville at 7 and 2 and Thomasville gets the win 31 21 Jackson Aggies will host Briarwood Christian next week while Thomasville will play at Charles Henderson Jackson ranked number two in the state in 5A Thomasville number six in 4A Sarah Land beats Laverne tonight 52 to 6 the Spartans will play at Chilton County next week in round one Washington County stays hot 30 14 winners over McIntosh tonight and Washington County will be hosting Houston Academy in round one next Friday night. Sweetwater and T.R. Miller 28-27. What a game. Miller is uh, home next week against Sampson in the playoffs. W.S. Neal will be hosting Abbeville. Check out Neal 60 to 21 winners over Millery tonight. A couple of other scores that we have. XL 56 Marengo 20 and Fruitdale and Florella. Florella gets a 32 to 21 win. And Flomington 63, 20 winners over Central Haytyville, Pleasant Home, and Blackshire. J.U. Blackshire wins 30 to 22. So there you have it. And we look ahead to a doubleheader tomorrow on News 5 in the Southeastern Conference. Ole Miss at Georgia at 2.30. And the Crimson and White collides tomorrow with the LSU Tigers at 7 o'clock. And what a game that's going to be. We hope you enjoy it. And I'll be in tomorrow to preview the big game as well as talk about the Auburn Tigers game against New Mexico State and the Jaguars at home tomorrow at 2.30 against Florida International. Enjoy that game. We'll have highlights at 6. Have a great weekend, everyone. Thanks for watching tonight's edition of Sideline.
You've been watching Sideline on WKRG News 5. Tonight's show was sponsored by Palmer's Toyota Superstore.